today's video is going to be a real downer. I'm going to talk to you about chicken pain, suffering, dying, death, and euthanasia. Nobody likes to deal with these topics, but death and dying are something that happen to all of our chickens, every single one. So we need to be prepared when this time comes. I've learned some things over the years that I really wish I would have known earlier, and most of those things have come from doing necropsies. A necropsy is when you cut an animal open after death and you examine all of their internal organs and try to figure out why they died. I necropsy all of my chickens after they die, unless the cause of death is really obvious, like a predator attack, those ones I just lay to rest. But in this video, I wanna share just a few of the things I've learned over the years so that you can feel better about knowing what to do when one of your chickens is dying or potentially dying. And I feel like I need to just spout out this obligatory disclaimer. I am not a vet. I am not a poultry scientist. I am just some weird lady from Idaho who nerds out about chickens. So consult your own professionals. This is just my amateur opinion. <laughs> you gonna, where are you going, you cuties? Whoa! Oh boy! Whoa, 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 don't fall! With that out of the way, the reason I want to talk about these things right now, because this is, these are topics I actually hate talking about, but it came up recently because I got an email from someone who I'll call A. Hi, A. And she found herself in this heartbreaking situation of having a hen who's dying and not really knowing what to do about it. I know she's not the only person who's been there. All of us who raise chickens as pets and not just as livestock have been there. Come on up, let me see you. Hi. Well, good day. How are you doing, Pippa Joe? How are you doing, Pippa Joe? So I figured rather than just going over all of this with A, this death, dying, and euthanasia stuff, that I'd share it with others out there who need to know it too, and particularly beginners. I want to start by just sharing a little bit of A's story with you. So here is some of what she wrote in her first email to me. This chicken is taking so long for her to pass away, hasn't eaten in five days, and does not want any water. I don't know what is wrong with her. She just lays there and sleeps. She's two years old, and the other chickens are doing fine. I think she's on her way out. I can't understand why it's taking so long. I have her in the house in comfort. People who have lots of chickens have a better understanding about death. So A and I exchanged a few emails over this day and by the end of the day, her hen had died. And so A, I'm very sorry for your loss here. I know that was a really hard day for you. And I still cry every time I lose a chicken. I break into the whiskey. ice cream and I just cry. I know not everyone feels that way, but if you are that way, I'm just saying I get you. Hi cuties. Hi Sasha. Hello Miss Sasha. Oh my gosh, you're so pretty. You're so pretty Sasha. But the first thing I have to say about a situation here is that Death just takes as long as it takes. Sometimes it's swift, other times it's slow and lingering, just like it is with people. I've seen this personally in my own life. My father died just a few years ago, relatively quickly from a heart attack. My mother died almost 10 years ago. The 10 year anniversary of her death is actually this December. She died a very slow, lingering, painful death from breast cancer. And so it is with our families and ourselves. So it is with our chickens. We don't know who's gonna die quickly and we don't know who's gonna really suffer. But, and I hate to break this to beginners, the truth is that the death that A described here with a chicken who's not eating, uh, not drinking, not moving, who's clearly suffering, because that is a chicken who's clearly suffering, uh, that kind of death is more the norm 
then it is the exception. And you will occasionally find chickens who die suddenly. In laying hens, one of the most common causes of death is liver hemorrhagic syndrome. And in, in that, the liver just ruptures and kind of bleeds out in the hen. Death is relatively fast. And as far as we know, the chicken's not suffering at all until that liver actually ruptures. And usually when this happens, you have a chicken who seems perfectly happy and healthy. And then the next time you walk into the coop, there she is dead on the floor. And it is really sad when that happens and it always makes people think, oh my gosh, what did I do? Um, I'd be thinking that if I didn't necropsy my chickens and know that, oh, I didn't do anything, their liver just ruptured. But it really is one of the better ways for your chickens to die. And I say that because the chicken suffering is limited to those final, I don't know if it's hours or minutes, but to those final moments as far as we know. And it's typically easier on you because you don't have to decide whether to euthanize, you just find the chicken dead. Don't you peck her? No. I know you're adorable, Scrappy, but you don't peck her. I know. You can peck me, that's fine. Just be nice to Elvira. You look angry. Are you a little bit mad? But for the rest of your chickens, it's just not that nice, or at least that's what I found with my flock. So here's the norm. One day you will find a chicken in your coop or some other place he or she feels safe. And they may be puffed up and just kind of looking like they don't feel very well. They'll barely be eating or they'll stop eating. Eventually they'll stop eating altogether. Eventually they'll stop drinking, although that can take longer. And then that chicken will die. And that process can take a few days, a couple of days, or it can take a week or more. All right, here's where things get really uncomfortable. By the time that chicken is in that coop, not moving, not wanting to eat, not wanting to drink, um, another sign is if you have a flighty hen and she just lets you handle her without reacting to it, it's another really bad sign. By the time you see this, more often than not, that chicken's been suffering for a really, really long time and you just haven't seen it. <coughs> So the academic research is really clear on this and everything I've seen in necropsies has just confirmed this for me. First, from the literature, we know that chickens do feel pain and they feel it very, very strongly, just like you do. That is not in dispute. And second, and this is really, really important, Chickens hide their pain much better than you do, much better than your cats and dogs do. And that's because chickens are prey animals. And that means it's in their nature to always pretend that they're healthy, even when their pain is excruciating. And I know nobody wants to hear that. I have seen on blogs and YouTube videos so many times, people saying things like, oh, my hen was under the weather for a few days there and then she died peacefully in her sleep. No, she didn't. That's very unlikely that she wasn't really suffering. So I'm gonna tell you a couple stories here about what chickens look like after they die and you open them up so that you can better understand their experiences and the suffering that they hide from you. And if you ever start to necropsy your chickens after these situations, you, you will just be shocked at the things you see. I cannot even tell you how bad some of the things I've seen have been. It's you open them up and you see these messes and you think, how was that chicken alive for so long? How did she even live to this? How did it get so bad? And the great majority of the causes of death that I see are reproductive diseases or reproductive disorders. And this is especially true for hens who die young between the ages of two and three. Almost every single time that's gonna, that death is going to be because of a reproductive problem. And these deaths are unfortunately quite common with very good layers. That is the price of laying an egg almost every day. Reproductive problems. And I'm not gonna show you photos or videos of what I found here. I do have them. If you think it would be helpful to see those and you'd like to see that, then let me know in the comments below. Um, I go back and forth. I have thought about 
putting some of these images out just so that I can drive home to people how important it is to euthanize when you have a dying chicken. At the same time, I hate to kind of make a spectacle of my birds that way and I just don't know how helpful it would be. So let me know if you have an opinion on that. So the first common cause of death I want to talk to you about is ovarian cancer or oviduct cancer. What that looks like inside your hen is that her ovaries and her oviduct will be completely covered in these little tumors. And it's very common for these tumors to spread to other organs, particularly to the digestive system. So one of my hens who had this, my little hen Betty, she had these little tumors all over her intestines and intestines should be nice, long, loose, pliable, very bendy. Hers were really, really rigid and they were stuck together in this big mass. And because those intestines and other parts of her digestive tract were so riddled with tumors, food and water wasn't able to get through and she was starving. And Betty, up until that day of euthanasia, she just seemed like a normal chicken. Her feathers weren't even ruffled. She just blended right in with the rest of the flock. So was she suffering then in all those days before that day of her euthanasia when I found her all puffed up in the coop? Undoubtedly. She had to have been suffering for a really long time and not just from the symptoms of the cancer itself, but from the starvation that resulted from having all those tumors on her intestines. Another common cause of death that you'll see quite frequently if you start necropsying your hens is internal laying. And this is when a hen starts releasing egg yolks into her internal cavity. It's called the salomic cavity rather than in her oviduct where they're supposed to go. And so what happens is these egg yolks just start building up in her abdominal area and eventually they start rotting and the hen typically will end up with a very serious bacterial infection and then she'll die. The first time I saw internal laying in my flock was with this little hen named Penny. I came into the coop one day, she was sitting there with her feathers all fluffed up looking really uncomfortable. And I took her to this vet who had in the past spent a long time working for this really big sanctuary in New York State, which quite far from here but it's a well-known sanctuary and he said that when this happened with those hens there he would give them antibiotics and that's what he recommended for Penny. So I did that and it's one of the biggest regrets I've ever had in my chicken keeping. antibiotics they got her feeling uh, just that little bit better so she started eating a little bit again she started leaving the coop kind of chickening around and then two months later I went into the coop and she was just laying there dead on the roosting bars oh my god don't do that <laughs> you little goofball. Be nice to Elvira. What's your deal? What's your deal, girl? So as I was saying, two months later, I went into the coop and I found her there dead. And I took her inside, cut her open. And what I saw in there was like the worst horror movie you've ever seen. She had rotting eggs all over like every orifice of her insides was just stuffed with this rotting egg material and as soon as I cut her open I could just smell this rot and I realized then that all I had done by giving Penny those antibiotics was prolong her suffering for two more months and it was in the heat of the summer which she hated anyway and I really did wrong to her so never ever ever again will I prolong one of my chickens suffering like that. And I could go on and on with these stories. I have a million of them and they're not all reproductive problems. I've seen, 
I've seen a lot of cancer. I've seen a lot of really ugly things happening to organs. There's just all sorts of ways these chickens can die. I just want you to know that when you have a dying chicken, the only kind thing you can do for her is to euthanize her or him. This goes for roosters too. Can I move you one more time, beauty? Oh my god, okay. I'm trying to move backgrounds to keep the video more interesting, but maybe I should just stick it with one so these I don't have to keep shifting these hens around. Okay, so let's talk about now when to euthanize. Unfortunately, we are always going to be euthanizing too late, and that's just because our chickens don't let us know when they're dying until it's the very end, and... Unfortunately, there's just nothing we can do about that. The best thing we can do is euthanize them when they tell us they're dying. And I'm gonna give you some of the criteria I use for that. First, they won't leave their coop or another area that they're comfortable in. They're very inactive. They've lost their zest. They've lost that brightness to their eyes. A lot of times they might look kind of disheveled or they might just be standing there kind of puffing their feathers out and just kind of looking like they don't really feel very well. But that's not enough. You need to troubleshoot at that point. Your chickens will often behave that very same way when they have treatable conditions, and especially if they're in some kind of acute pain. So for example, I used to have this cross beak chicken named Edie B. She was my chicken soulmate, I always said. Edie Bird. Uh, she would occasionally break her beak, and when that happened, she'd be either in the coop or in her bedroom. Yes, she had her own bedroom in my house. That's a different story. But she'd be sitting there all puffed up looking like she was really sick and she'd be totally inactive and she wouldn't be eating because her beak hurt. But a broken beak is a treatable condition. So you really need to examine your chickens to see if there's anything else that you can find wrong with them. When in doubt, take them to a vet if that's an option for you. If there's nothing else wrong with them, there are three things you need to check for. The first thing is, is their crop emptying? The second thing is, is their salomic cavity, that abdominal area, is that swollen or distended? And the third thing is, are they underweight? So that first thing, the crop, you wanna check their crop at night before they go to bed to see if there's food and water in it. If there's not, then they're not eating or drinking and that is a very bad sign. If there is, then you wanna go back out first thing that very next morning to check their crop again before they've had any food or water. In a healthy chicken, the crop will empty overnight. If you're still feeling stuff in it, then it's not emptying and that's a really bad sign. If you're really lucky, the crop is just impacted and that's a condition that is potentially treatable. I'll talk more about that in the future, but it's outside the scope of this video. It's too big of a topic, but look it up. But I will say I've had a lot of chickens whose crops have stopped emptying. And one time, only one time, was it ever an actual crop impaction. All those other times, it was a dying chicken. So second step, if your chicken's crop isn't emptying and that salomic cavity on your hen is distended, then I recommend euthanasia every time. I actually asked my favorite avian vet about this once. I said, if a crop isn't emptying and they have that terrible swollen distended belly, is there any scenario in which that chicken is okay and not dying? And she said, no, that there is no scenario that you might be able to extend their life. Like I did that one time with Penny and very much regretted with those antibiotics but that that is a dying chicken. And that is just one vet's opinion. You can ask other vets, see what they say, but that has also been my experience 100% of the time. Remember, I do necropsy every chicken. Every time I've had that combination, it has been a fatal reproductive condition and it's been really, really ugly. And the third thing is that if your chicken's salomic cavity isn't distended, but your chicken is really, really skinny, uh, in that case, I also recommend euthanasia. And that is because if a chicken's crop isn't emptying and she's severely underweight, she is starving to death. And then lastly, if you have a chicken like A's chicken from the earlier email, a chicken who is inactive, who's not eating, who's not drinking and has been like that for multiple days, you can try taking that chicken to a vet. When in doubt, I always take my chickens to a vet. And if that's not an option for you, then I recommend euthanizing that chicken. 
And that takes me to my final topic, euthanasia. And I have a million things to say about euthanasia and the different methods and what's good and what's bad, but it's just too much to share all of that in this video that's already getting a bit long. So I just wanna share one method of euthanizing that I think is the easiest method for beginners. And in particular, I'm thinking about people who really love their chickens and who are really struggling with the idea of euthanasia. And if that's you and you can get a spouse or a friend or a family member or a neighbor or a random guy off the street to do this for you, then all the better, but if you can't, then get very familiar with this now so that you can work up the courage to do it when the time comes. And that method is decapitation by machete and using a kill cone. Hey, sweetie. Mm, I know, I know. So you can buy an actual kill cone like this one, or you can even use a traffic cone. This one might be a little small, um, and you will likely need to chop off the end of that traffic cone because you need the hole to be big enough for a chicken's head to stick through it. And then you would attach the cone to the side of a shed or something like that. Or you could even stick it in a tree between two branches. And in just a second here, I'm gonna flash up a video right here from another YouTuber called Jungle Explorer where he actually does that. He puts a traffic cone between two branches of a fairly small tree. He sticks the chicken into the cone upside down, grabs the chicken's head gently with one hand and then quickly slices it off with the other. But before I show you that, there's one thing you need to know, and that's that putting a chicken upside down is like torture to a chicken. It's really cruel. So if you use this method, don't stall. As soon as you have that chicken upside down in the kill cone, kill him immediately. The only reason I'm recommending this method to you at all, where you have to put the poor chicken upside down, is because there is very little that can go wrong with it. If you lay a chicken on a tree stump and use an ax or something like that to try to cut its head off, things can go wrong. If you feel confident you can do that, then do that so you don't have to put the chicken upside down. But if you're like me, then you might not feel confident about your aim or your swing. And I did have a friend who tried that once and she didn't kill her rooster with that first strike. She got the angle wrong. The kill cone eliminates that problem. And that's why I recommend it for beginners or for people who are very nervous about euthanizing. So, here is a video of a man who is actually killing a chicken using this method. He's slaughtering the chicken rather than euthanizing it, but the method is the same. He gets to it at about 30 to 40 seconds into the video. I highly recommend that you watch it.